Hello, everybody, and welcome to Make It Monday. This is Tracy here, your friendly neighborhood paper pusher. Uh, we've done a little rejigging of the things on the weekend and um, with my IT department, and I think I might even have some better lighting today. Uh, we're about to find out. I'm actually going to show you how to make a delightful card today. Um, I am a little behind in prepping everything, so I never quite finished this project, which I'm going to show you really quickly, because I spent a great deal of time looking for a picture of the card we're going to make. But while I wrote down all the measurements really quickly, and the name of the lady who made it, because her name is Terry Gaines, and she's a very, very talented lady from the States, I didn't actually save a picture of the card. So to try to show you what we're making, I spent a great deal of time searching Facebook. And, uh, oh, searching. Searching, searching, searching. I didn't get anywhere. Let's just put it that way. Um, so I'm just going to show you the card and you'll just have to trust me that it looks something like what hers did. I mostly just took hers down for the measurements and how she folded it together. Um, I can't even remember how she decorated or what her set. I do know it was the same suite we're going to use, so I'll show you that. But in the meantime, I just wanted to let you know that I did check this morning. I had my reminder on my phone and there are refills for the September paper pumpkin kit, which is this kit which is so much bigger than I thought it was gonna be. I'm so impressed. So to give you an idea, this is a stamp case, which is the size of a DVD case for, <laughs> for anybody who remembers DVDs before everything just streamed. Um, and this, so this is like, it's a fair bit, right? This thing is probably 10 inches long. And I was most impressed by the little things that come inside and I put mine too far away to reach. They're all reversible, right? So you can make green ones, red ones, yellow ones, orange ones. I picked this orange one and turned it into a pumpkin that has these nice little stickers. And I have decided that um, I also have stamps that can do this. So I think I might stamp some of them. And I think I'm gonna take these pumpkin stickers and hide them in very unusual places around the house so that every time like my son opens the fridge to grab the milk, there's a, there's a Halloween face on it or something. So I think I'm gonna have some fun with the stickers and just stamp on mine. But even if you didn't stamp and you just made it into a pumpkin, Plain. It's, it's awesome. But look how big these things are. Like these things are probably the size of a small apple. There is, they're definitely a little bit bigger than a mandarin. I was trying to come up with some good comparison. Um, there's nine of those caramel squares, the little chewy caramels that you get at Halloween. There's nine of them in there. And if I would shaken it and adjusted it, I might've been able to get a couple more in there. Certainly you could get in some of the smaller chocolate bars. They come in the pack like what small Mars bars and some of the smaller ones. I think a Smarties would be too long, I think, but certainly the arrow bars, there's a lot of them that are shorter. You could probably put two or three mini chocolate bars in here or all sorts of stuff. Um, I did make, so I did make a pumpkin. There, you get 12 of these. Uh, so there's three different sort of combinations of colors and you get four each. So you could make a bunch of different things. Um, I did make one into an apple and I just, instead of making runners, which I know are on a pumpkin, but pretty sure are not on an apple. Um, I just tightly twisted the stem on this one and turned it into an apple. So it looks, I've also seen people make these into strawberries. If you use the leaf from the pumpkin, which I guess more closely resembles a strawberry leaf and put a couple of those on and then strawberries do have runners. So you could run that out again. This paper sort of red with little flecks on it. So you could make that look like a strawberry. So anyways, there are refill kits available. I do not know how long they'll last. In the refill kit, you get the box, which is what makes this. Um, when you, sorry, I'm trying to reach across my desk. When you cut it up, you'll have a whole bunch of pieces like this left over um, and you will have made it. So it comes with the cardboard and these black stickers, which is how you, oops, try not to dump it, how you fasten it together and make the little wheel. It's all just stickers. It goes together quite quickly. And 12 of the little treat holders, all of the leaves, the little things. What you do not get is the stamp set and the ink spot, but I have the stamp set and the ink spot, so if you really wanted to, um, I actually use the big ink pad, so I haven't even opened this up yet, so you could have the ink pad, but if you need to borrow this, you could, uh, but yeah, you could make, it's $15, that includes the shipping and the tax, uh, to make 12 of the containers and all the decorations and one wheelbarrow. I don't know, like I said, these were pretty popular kits and once people saw them and saw how big they were and how nice they were for Halloween, or not Halloween, well, I guess it could be Halloween, or Thanksgiving dinner or whatever, they make great like little table place settings and stuff. So if anybody has, now that you've seen what it does, 
is interested in this, let me know right away. I'm putting an order in before Thursday because that's when celebration ends. And I, I need to stock up on a few things. So I'm no different than anybody else. I like free too. So I will order my extra adhesives and envelopes and stuff when I can get free stuff with it. I did. I did just dump everything all over the desk. <laughs> so there we go. Problem solved. Okay, let's move on to the card now. So this is a stamp set we're using, um, the bundle. Oh, look at that. People here, I totally forgot to look for the comments. I did say 15, the refill kits are 13. And then when you add on, sorry, I should clarify that. If you if you order them as part of the group order and I split the shipping with you, they're 15. If you order them to have them delivered to your house, it would be about 25 because you pay 9.95 for shipping as opposed to the portion of shipping that I would charge. So yeah. You can order them straight to your house. If you need any help with the ordering, let me know. And hello, Tamara. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> I'm so excited when there's comments. And yet at the same time, I get so focused on trying not to screw up what I'm doing that I barely think to look at the comments. So here we go. This is the stamp set. As I said, the card was made by Terry Gaines, demonstrator in the States. And I put it in the envelope to show you so that you would see that it actually fits in the envelope. So the, and this is, a, I, this is like, here's a you know, pro tip for you. When you put your card in, you want to put the card facing you. So when they open the envelope, they go, ooh, when they open it. Ooh. So this is the card. And I'm going to show it like this, because although we did figure out how to get the angle camera today, I didn't turn it on before we started. Here, I'll do it like this. So this is the card. And as you can see, it is layered. And it is gorgeous. Gorgeous. So I love this card. And it is just a little bit different than, oops, there we go, your average size card. And it does, see, thank you, Tamara. Ooh. Um, and it does fold flat to fit in an envelope so you can mail it. Um, I will be honest, I, I, have, I see stuff, I think that's great. I write down the part I need and I basically forget everything else. So Terry Gaines' card was very pretty. I do remember that she had a white embossed background. So instead of putting the, the pattern paper like I did, which she did suggest. She had a piece of white cardstock that she had embossed with, I think the evergreen trees, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, but I can't really remember how she decorated her. So if you feel like Googling, Google Terry Gaines. But so I, the way I decorated my card and the way that you decorate your card, that's totally up to you. I, and basically what I'm gonna show you is just how this card goes together. So you know how to make the layers and fit stuff. But is this not awesome? And it's, it's designed to sit on your desk, which when you look at it from the front is a much better view than I see on the camera. So here we go. I will, uh, I will actually, should have done it beforehand. I will take a picture of my card and I will post all the measurements on the post that I put after this when I link to the video. Um, so you will be able to see what we need. So I'm just gonna, right now, I'm just gonna go through the steps. So the first piece, <clears throat> I guess if you wanna try to go along, I'll say about as I go, is six and a half by four and a half and it scored an inch in from each end. We are going to give each one of these a nice little crease and we are going to valley fold. Valley fold means like a valley. Oops, I do it this way, like a valley. So this one is valley fold. Then we have two pieces of paper, white cardstock. They're both five and a half, which is the standard width of the card, landscape card. And they're each scored a half an inch in from each end. One of them is three and a half and one of them is two and a half inches tall. And I'm gonna fold these, these uh, little score lines in, even though we haven't stamped or cut or anything, because <clears throat> that will help me know where to put my stamps. Because if not, I'm just, I'm just guessing. I will tell you that in the video, <laughs> I'm more of a wing it person. In the video that I saw with Terry Gaines, she, she got fancy. She took out her stamparatus and she lined everything up and she did it all beautifully on her stamparatus. I'm more of a wing it person, so I'm just stamping. And cutting and hoping for the best. Uh, this this card is all done in shades of gray, and yet it's still oh, it's just so pretty. And to me, it's so wintry and Christmassy and lovely. Um, I did put on mine. I put the sentiment wishing you the best because that way, if if it's a birthday, you know, all the best people are born in the winter time. What can I say? Um, so if you are putting it on, it's like a winter birthday card. Um, I think this would work perfectly. So this is how our card is gonna go. Here, I'll, I'm gonna take one step back and try not to stick anything into that. 
ink file that is now open. Okay, so this is how the card is gonna go, right? This is your back layer and this is your front layer. And this is basically how it's gonna stack together, right? So what we're trying to do is make the back layer and the front layer and cut them out to give us the, the dimension that we did. But this is basically how it's gonna fit in here. So your back layer is gonna stand like this. This is the mountain fold, right? Because it goes, oops, like this, like a mountain. <laughs> so all I did, because like I said, the stamparatus and all those extra steps seem too fussy to me, is we wanna just make sure that we're close to the top. This is the die that we're gonna use to cut out the treats. So you wanna make sure you have at least that much leeway on it. And you can, the, the die fits, sorry about that, I just looked up and realized, not even on screen. <laughs> the die has longer uh, feet, I don't know, on it. So you could, you could adjust this right close to the edge or you could move it over a little bit. We are gonna trim, it's only gonna cut one side, so we're gonna do a little trimming with the scissors anyways. But you basically want your trees close to the top and over to the left. So that's what we're gonna do. And we're gonna see how well I do this. And I'm gonna try to not stick my head in the way either. So close to the top, over to the left, straight down, straight up, trees. Then we're going to do the same thing with the cabin. Only with the cabin, I don't want it quite as far to the left because I wanna be able to see the trees because trees are awesome. So I'm gonna ink up my thing again. But the same thing, you do want the die so I'll show you just, I already did this, so I know what I'm doing, but so you want the die as close to the top as you can. I'm leaving a little space just so I don't have to guess where on the back side that, that line is. Uh, and try to go straight, which maybe I will, maybe I won't. <laughs> Let's just see. So now if you wanted to, <clears throat> you could do either at this step or as soon as we're done die cutting it, you could put your sentiment right on this layer. Right, I actually made this one, I, I see now, I made this one a little closer to the bottom, but I could stamp a nice little like happy birthday or something right there if I wanted to. You notice on mine, I did it afterwards. This is partially because I like layers and also because I totally forgot to stamp the, the sentiment on the flat part. So mine, I just made like a little tag. I made it in the same white because I didn't want to have too many different colors going on. And I just popped it up on dimensionals. Oops, so you can see the dimensionals because I like, I like the dimension. But yes, you could stamp it on here if you wanted to. So now what we're gonna do, and I love me, my little mini big shot, or my little mini stamp and cut and emboss machine, which needs a shorter name. We're just going to cut these out. So this is how I do it. <laughs> I'm gonna see if I can do it on the camera and line it up without, except without sticking my head in the way. So we're going to line this up. Actually, I'm not going to because I can't see squat right now. Um, but we're going to line this up and because I want it to stay in place when I put it in. I'm going to line it up and then I'm going to put my sticky note on to hold it in place. So let me just line this up where I can actually see what I'm doing. I'm cutting these partially so you can see how I did them, but also because the step of lining it up to get it to open properly is probably the you could figure out how to stamp and how to decorate and how to cut. And I'm going to challenge you all to make a card using this sort of staggered layer. Here's the trick with the mini big shot. You have to make sure that the bottom two plates are lined up. Then you need to make sure that the top plate is not lined up and, have, and don't have anything too close to the edge. That is the trick to this thing. And this thing is just genius. And I love that it's so like small and fits on my desk but it is a little bit temperamental about uh, being lined up. Well, lined up, unlined up. Huge your paper up a titch. <laughs> I have no idea at what point that comment was made. <laughs> so I am gonna try to pay a little more attention to what is going on on the screen and try to stay in the screen. So but I'm gonna assume that's what that has to do with. So I'm gonna cut the second one now. I'm gonna do the same thing. Um, so same thing, I'm gonna line up my trees. I'm gonna put my sticky note down. I'm just going to do it where I can actually see. Uh, and these dies are awesome. The, the, the cutting part, the little like part on the backside that cuts is really, really close to the opening. So the little quarter inch or so that is, that's not a quarter inch, well maybe it is. Um, three sixteenths of an inch that's there. Uh, 
is, is if a little bit of it goes off the page, you're okay. Uh, let's turn that book mine are gonna be on the page now. We're good. But yeah, the cutting part is like really close to the inside edge of the die. So I was smart enough to put a table beside my desk today so that I wouldn't have to drop things on the floor. Okay, I'm just keeping my paper up. Okay, so this comes out cut like this. And we pop the die off and I obviously missed a little bit, but the stamp is so pretty that it's not even gonna be noticeable. So here's the thing, in both of these, you are going to just finish this a little bit where it didn't cut. So just as a note, if you're doing this in your stamparatus, you can pre-cut your piece of paper. This is how Terry did hers. She pre-cut her piece of paper to get the bottom piece. She cut a second piece that had more room up top, so there was room for the magnets. She put this in the stamparatus. She lined up her stamps in her stamparatus using this as the template. Then she put her bottom piece in, stuck it down, and lined it up so her trees were stamped perfectly. My trees are not stamped, or my trees are actually stamped perfectly, they're just not cut perfectly, but I'm quite all right with it, given how many other steps there were in her process. Start off to the side, we have the cabin, same thing, it only cut so far. So we are going to trim it off. So now we have our two layers. And like I said, if you wanted to, well, I guess you could add anything you want to the back layer too, but if you want to add anything on the front layer, there is lots of room here, lots of real estate as it were. <clears throat> Excuse me. And if you wanted to, you could stamp right on here. I'm not even going to decorate this card yet. So I, I'm going to just put it together. So I will be putting a tag on it once again. Now, most of the time when you make like a box or something, you want to put your tear and tape as close to the edge as you can. So that when you put your two sides together, you don't have any kind of gap. Right, you don't, oops, you don't want it gaping or anything like that. You want a nice tight corner. In this case though, you want your card to fold flat and you want to have a little bit of give. So instead of putting it right next to the score line, you're putting it right next to the edge. And you won't notice it when your card is put together, but I didn't try it the wrong way just to see, but I can see where if you had it right close to the top, there's no room for error in sticking it together for starters, but it also would be a lot tighter fit for for folding it flat and for getting it to go together. So I am just putting, I love tear and tape. I am totally team tear and tape. Um, the original stuff you had that was plastic that you had to cut with scissors and then have this like very staticky, staticky layer on it um, that used to stick to absolutely everything was the greatest stuff, but the most frustrating to you is this new stuff that you could just rip with your fingers. It's awesome. Okay. so. I almost forgot to do this the last time, and I would imagine that you probably could put the background on after you put the layers in, but I'm gonna suggest it's a whole lot easier to put it in beforehand. So this piece is four and a quarter by four, so it fits just inside this with a little bit of a border. I'm doing it upside down because if I can see at least two sides, in this case, I can see all three, and I get those straight, then I know the other one's gonna, it's gonna be right as well. Uh, the other thing you can do, and I'm not gonna do it on this one because I screwed up the size. Uh, this should have been four and a quarter by four, not four by four. So uh, my size is a little off, but I didn't realize it till I was too late in sticking this one down. So I'm gonna make this one just a little bigger, but you can just use a piece of white cardstock, stamp a couple things on it, and then this is where you can write on it. If you're making your card, and you know exactly who it's going to when you make it, you can write everything on it, then stick the piece of paper on. But this is a fairly flat card as much as it's got all this dimension. So as long as you watch for where this big knot is gonna be in my bow or put that on afterwards, you actually probably could write even though the card's fully assembled. I, I could still write on most of this without having too much trouble. So we're gonna do that. So here's the important part. And I realize my thing is a little off, so I'm gonna do it this way. So here's the important part of putting it together. And this is the part I wanted to show you. So this is, this is the front of your card. This is how you're gonna look at it. So you're gonna start with one side and you're gonna put it down and you want the bottom to be completely lined up because you want this to stand, right? So anything that's not lined up on the bottom, I'm gonna move this because I think you can see better without, I love my silicone mat. It's underneath me every time I craft, underneath me. <laughs> it's underneath my project every time I craft. <laughs> I, I cracked myself up. Nobody else is laughing, but I cracked me up. Okay, so we're gonna line it up. So this edge goes here. 
And I'm going to hold this up before I pull the tape off just so you can see what I mean. And then we're going to line it up so this edge goes here. I'm going to try to pick it up without screwing it. Okay, so as you see, there's the fold, right? The score line. So we want this edge to be just inside of the score line and lay it flat. Now here's the score line right there on the set, on the, this back layer. So we're going to put this next layer just before. So we're basically leaving room for the folds and lining everything up just beside it. So I'm going to do that. I just saw that laughing too. Thank you, Tamara. Not that I need anybody to laugh at me because I'll just keep going because you know, whatever. But it is nice when, you know, I'm not the only one I am using. Okay, so I'm gonna peel these little pieces of tape off. Now, if you've lined everything up, it's as simple as doing this and closing it. And now when you open it, boom, Bob's your uncle. Ta-da! I'm gonna show you from the back because I realize now it's way easier to see than when you're looking at the ragged edges of it. But that's, that's as easy as it was. So you're gonna do the same thing on the other side. You're gonna fold it flat. You're gonna put this edge just inside and this edge just inside. And we're gonna peel off the tape. Peel off the tape and I just knocked everything. So we're gonna give that one a little adjustment. <laughs> this is the real stamping. We're gonna pull up the hair that I'm shedding out of the tape. Um, we're gonna make sure that I line the bottom back up. So everything is just inside of the score lines and we're gonna fold over and because my, my tearing tape is sticking out a little bit and because I'm picky about it, I'm just gonna give that a little bit of a trim. There we go. Now this side whoop, stands up as well. So I'm not sure why this one bends like this, but it does give it a bit of dimension. So I'm good with that. So there we go. That's how the card goes together to get your different layers. Now with mine, because I didn't cut any extra stuff in, because I'm not gonna decorate that one right now because decorating is just decorating. With mine, I took the three dies that were in the set and I just cut out of the plain green, this is dark gray, the dark gray cardstock. I just cut three trees out. I fastened those on by glue dots. You wanna make sure that if you do add anything to the front of the card, that the glue stays below the level of the paper. The first one I put on, I realized I had glue dot way up here. I'm gonna bring that up where you can see it. I had a glue dot way up here, which is not a good idea because the first time you fold your card, which I guess I would probably fold it this way, you're gonna glue your tree down and there goes your card. So make sure when you're adding anything to the front, that you pay attention to where the glue goes so that you're sticking it to just the front. I added the only other color, this is basically all basic gray, smoky slate, so not, like a little bit lighter gray ink and the gray card stock. And I added this one little bit of black just cause I liked it. Um, but yeah, everything else is pretty much tone on tone in here. So decorate as you see fit, Oops, I'm having a hard time staying there. And then I did add, usually I add three, I like things in threes, but this time I actually added five rhinestones to make some little sun uh, stars in my snowy sky. So there you have it. I have no idea what this card is called either. So here's what I'd like. I'd like you to make a card because I think you could put, even if you don't have dies that necessarily cut like exactly like this, I think you could cut pieces of cardstock and put stuff on it. And I'm gonna try a few later in the week and just make it layered. I don't think they have to necessarily be this die set to do. It. But if you wanna make one using this die set, go ahead. And if anybody knows what this card is called, by all means, tell me, because <laughs> I don't know what it is. So there's my card for today. That's our Make It Monday. I love this card. I will be making many more of these cards because it is just, it's super simple to make and it's just so darn pretty and it's easy to mail. The hardest part of mailing this card is going to be getting it in the box with out catching every single tree or getting it in the box, getting it in the envelope without catching every single branch on each tree as I did the first time. Ooh, that one went much better. Look at that. Live on camera, it was much better. Ta-da! So there's our card. Thank you everybody for joining me. Thank you Tamara for laughing along and, and uh, getting in the groove with me, I appreciate it. Oh, I just untied my bow when I did that. So I have to do a better job of my bow and my envelope. Um, I will post all the measurements as I said, when I'm done and I will take a picture of my card after I fix my fancy bow. And I would love to see your creations. So pop them in the comments when you're done. And uh, Enjoy making it Monday. Thanks, everyone. Have a good day.